Right. Let's see. It's working. Yep, yep. Looks like it's good. All right. First episode of Pins and Axles. I need to start this off properly. I got it with a joke. Okay, so this is a really good one. So I'm a, I'm a minifigure, walks into a bar, and... <laughs> What the heck, editor? I was telling a really great joke and you ruined it! Oh. Wait a sec. I'm the editor. Okay, with that out of the way, welcome to Pins and Axles. I'll be your host, LJ Worst Beard, this side of the Mississippi River, Johnson. And today we're going to be talking about our favorite toy line, that being Lego. More specifically, this episode, a sub-theme, or one of their many lines, Bionicle. Bionicle first released in late 2000 in Europe before its widespread release worldwide in 2001. The theme ran for 10 years before ending and going on hiatus, to where it would then be brought back for another 2 years in 2015. Since the theme ran for so long, names have been attributed to several groups of years as to better discuss them online. For instance, 2006 to 2008 are what are known as the Ignition Trilogy. Meanwhile, 2004 and 2005, they're called the Flashback Years. But most importantly for this video, we're going to be talking the first three years of the Bionicle line, the Golden Years. But why are they called the Golden Years? Well, many would suggest that it's due to the massive amount of world building done throughout those three years. Others would argue it is due to the atmosphere thanks to games such as Minog 1 and 2. Today, however, I'll be putting forth the idea that the sets have had a strong hand in this longtime title. Let's start the discussion. Now, as many of you may recall from my recap reviews, the sets released across these three years aren't exactly the greatest. They're plagued by a severe lack of articulation, awkward designs, or, in some cases, blatant rehashes. There are many factors as to why this is, so let's tackle the first one, that being nostalgia. On my end, I didn't get into Bionicle until roughly late 2002 to early 2003. Unlike most TTV hosts, I was not a fan from the very beginning, and as such, I cannot argue from a standpoint of enjoying the line while I was in its reported peak. That being said, nostalgia is a powerful thing. I've seen it in full force in the comments of the recap reviews, specifically about the Toa Mata and Nuva on several occasions. It does a great job of hindering any actual debate about these sets, as they are absolutely not perfect in any way. For this discussion, I'm not going to be taking story into account at all. Given that the point of this series is to discuss themes from the standpoint of their main product, the sets, I'll only be focusing on what one can glean from those. With all that out of the way, let's start at the beginning. Because starting at the end would ruin the video. In the year of 2001, a rough total of 24 sets were released. This includes 6 Tomata, 6 Turaga, 6 Tahunga, 5 Rahi, the Power Pack Continuum, a Torin Hafu, and a Partridge in a Pear Tree. This gave us an average of 3 characters per village, with 1 Toa, 1 Turaga, and at least 1 Matoran. Additionally, every village has a creature to fight, as every Rahi set came with at least 2 Rahi. This is our first indication as to what sets apart the Golden Years from the rest. Looking at the sets, you already have a well-defined dynamic. You have a hierarchy for every tribe and a creature to either side with or oppose any of the given villages. When it comes to pros and cons, I've already gone over the individual issues in my set reviews, so I'll have a link to the playlist here and in the description. To sum it up, all the sets lack a massive amount of articulation, but make up for it with their play value. The sets contain some function, whether it be lunging, punching, or throwing. When compared to later sets LEGO would make, such as the Toa Nika or even the Masters from 2015, the sets from this year fail to compare for many. However, 2001 sets up an important distinction that later years attempt to repeat but end up failing. With that said, let's move on to the next year. In 2002, a rough total of 22 sets were released. This includes 6 Toa 6 Barak, 6 Barak Va, the 3 large sets, and the Bionicle Master Builder set containing 15 Rahi designs. Seeing as the Borak are intended to be separate from the pre-established tribes, simply from a design perspective, we are given an average of two characters per group, with one Borak, one Borak Va, and the two Barag. And now while the Barag are visually tied to the Borak, they only come in red and blue, despite using pieces from all six Borak. This year continues yet another trend, giving us a structure for our groups in the form of a visual hierarchy. We can tell that the Barak Va are at the bottom, due to their size, then the Barak, and then the Barag. Additionally, we see a continuation from the prior year with the Nuva, seen as though they are upgraded versions of the prior characters. 
Finally, we retain a sense of expansion with the Bionicle Master Builder set, as we have 15 new creature designs to inhabit the current character palette. With this, we can even further flesh out the world with creatures outside of those released in 2001, and build up that aspect of the world. With all that out of the way, let's move on to the last of these years. Finally, 2003. During this year, another rough total of 22 sets were released. This gave us 6 Matorn, 6 Barak Kal, 6 Rakshi, and 4 large sets. Now, here, things start to be a little less cohesive. We can tell that the Barak Kal are in some way related to the prior year's Barak, and that they fit into the hierarchy, somehow. Given that the Nuva's visual upgrade was the addition of silver armor and weapons, we can safely assume that they are above a standard Barak, but below the Barak. With the Matoran, we have some returning characters, almost entirely from 2001. The only new faces we see are with Takua, Kopik, and Holly, who hadn't had sets up until this point. Now, the Rakshi and the large sets are where things start to get harder to connect. We have Makuta, who one wouldn't know is the big bad unless they follow the story, but we can assume he has a connection with the Rakshi due to the pieces used. The issue is, the Gakko, Puku, and Usanui also use those same pieces. Given that they are being utilized as transportation by characters that traditionally side with the Toa, that may in some way negate any possible connection with Makuta. 2003 is the most visually disconnected of the three years, without any knowledge of the story. This can be attributed to the fact that it is a split year, attempting to do two different things at once, and without the story, it looks rather scattered in its goal. Outside of that, we do see there is still a hierarchy with the Rakshi and Makuta, with an addition to the Barak group and an upgrade to the Matoran build. Whew, okay, there, covered, all of them. Now, I'm sure you must be asking yourself, what does it mean? Why does any of this matter? Well, the answer is actually very simple. Let me explain. It's because these three years have a collective atmosphere. Now, hold on, hold on, hold on, wait a second. I know what you must be saying now. LJ, uh, you said atmosphere is one of the things that Bionicle did well in the first three years, and then it's separate from the sex. So come on, explain yourself. Well, you aren't technically wrong. L let me explain. These three years establish a lot of visual world building of their own. You can clearly see groups, villages, and hierarchies. It's evident that there is a flow to how these sets appear and group up together. Seeing them all in one place or in a row, you can see a world that has been fleshed out and established. What helps is that they all share the same aesthetic, that being technicky and greebly. These three years do something that other years attempt to accomplish, but don't come quite as close as these do. The closest we see is 2009 with the Galatorian and the Agori, and 2015 with the Masters and the Protectors. Granted, some may disagree and believe that this is all forced and unintended. You may be right, however that doesn't necessarily devalue what's been said here. The Bionicle story was large and expansive, fleshing out details and giving a why to the various aspects of every set. It seems clear that while it may not have been intentional, there was certainly a visual cohesion in the first three years shared that, to many, set them apart from the rest. But what do you guys think? Feel free to let me know either in the comments below or on the TTV message boards over at board.ttvchannel.com. I've been your host, LJ Johnson, and feel free to check out all the other content we have here on the channel. Specifically the recap reviews and Ninjago TLDR. Who knows, you might find something you just really like. Thank you all very much for watching, and I shall see you all next time. Farewell.